So I have two works in the exhibition this year. The first is called The Seamstress, and it's a photograph of my grandmother sitting in her garage that she built with her husband, my grandfather. And the second one is called The Machine, and it's an aerial photograph of um, my grandmother's sewing machine. The title of my work is, is Folds Into Eternity. I focused, I guess, at the start of it on the ideas of colour and form and shape. And I then, you know, moved through, you know, what types of kind of ideas do I want to have, like, evolve in this work. So I really loved repetition. I thought that was really important, this kind of folding, this accentuating. There are a set of three black and white acrylic paintings. One is a portraiture. Um, and two are of urban landscapes. They all have very dramatic lighting or chiaroscuro. My work is called August um, and I've given it the sort of relatively broad name because it's a reflection of that point in time in my life. It was about me expressing how I felt on that canvas. Um, I didn't go into it with a plan. It was, it was just sort of like, let's see what happens. Let's see how this goes. I used a Canon 450D SLR camera and I decided not to use a tripod or anything um, when taking the photographs because I wanted to try, and, to try and create a documentary style of work and basically the two work collaboratively to explore the overall theme for studio arts that I had last year which was cultural identity. Probably the most challenging was the editing process because I took a lot of photographs so that was quite hard to try and make sure they all sort of looked the same. Um, sort of vibrancy and contrast and balance. The collection of work that I had created was like a documentation of not just my own cultural identity, but I thought Melbourne's. We all come from different parts of the world and create this amazing culture that is very unique to Melbourneian society. So originally I started with just portrait shots of my grandparents' face and doing, pulling all sorts of emotions because I thought that was quite interesting. I eventually ventured off into taking images of the landscape in which they come from. And my favourite artist would be the Polish photographer Sophia Rydert. So she wanted to try and capture a photograph of every home in Poland in the 1980s, I think. I will translate sort of her idea of trying to capture her own Polish heritage and culture into my own artwork by taking photographs of my grandparents and their home. I'm going to be studying biomed law at Monash. Wherever I go, I'll try and take as many photographs, like especially traveling, because I thought that's really interesting. And dealing with like the concept of culture and how wherever we go, we'll always encounter different aspects of other people's lives. The advice I would give to studio arts and arts kids for this year would be to get straight into everything that they're doing. So take as many trial uh, photo shoots if they're doing photography, do as many painting practices as they can, because the more they do, the better it is in the long run. Try and pick something that is quite broad so that throughout the year you can try and refine that theme and just pick a specific aspect. It should also be something that you're quite passionate about because when you're passionate about what you're doing and the work that you're completing, the end product will be something that you won't just be proud of but something that would be really interesting and unique. I used Timber because I had seen um, a lot of other artists, even artists in previous years in Top Arts. Using, using wood rather than maybe a more conventional canvas or other things to paint on. Probably time was a major challenge. Other challenges included just accurately representing the subject matter as I was trying to go for a realistic style. Just getting very fine details with the smallest brush that I had. One of the major influences on my artwork was the work of Caravaggio, who was a classical painter who had a meticulous attention to detail. An artist that I've taken a strong interest in recently would be Ian Fairweather, as he has opened my eyes to the world of abstract art through his eloquent way of describing it, but also just his simply very alluring and visually pleasing aesthetics. In 2017, I plan to travel with a couple of my good friends and practice art, possibly overseas. And next year, I'll be going to uni and doing the course of architecture at RMIT. 
The advice I'd give to students undertaking studio arts this year would be to do what you enjoy doing because I think that if you're passionate about the art that you're doing, you're going to find ways to overcome challenges. You'll spend a lot more time on it because you actually enjoy doing it. I experimented with acrylic paint, um, but I found that oil paint was best off for this practice because I needed, I needed the flexibility of oil paint in terms of drying time. I had to build myself an applicator, um, it, much like a squeegee. I work directly by putting the paint onto the applicator without medium or anything um, and effectively scraping it down the face of the canvas right the way to the bottom. And I repeated that process nine to ten times to create the different layers and there was a little bit of consideration that went into that regarding how, how I thought the colours might interact. For it to be a, a true reflection of myself um, and a, yeah, so as a truly expressive piece, I can't go into it planning what I'm going to do because that leaves no room for uh, the unexpected. You know, it's the way the paint comes off the applicator. There's, I have no control over that. You know, I can put it on in a certain way, so I might put more in the middle to try and concentrate the pigment in the middle of the canvas, but beyond that, I don't know how, what kind of texture it's gonna create. I enjoy that, but I've also really struggled with that, I think, because, you know, with that removal intention comes a, a risk of it all just being a catastrophe. I love coming to a place like the NGV and you know going into the painting, the I think it was Shut Up and Paint, the exhibition that's just been on. And I love that because I could go in there and there was there was a Richter on the wall and I absolutely love Gerhard Richter. He fascinates me. He creates the most amazing visual effects with the way he uses paint and his canvases that totally blow my mind and they're stunning. I love the fact that it can make me feel something that I didn't feel before I was looking at that. It can change the way I look at things. Pretty soon after this opens, I am jumping on a plane off to London. And while I'm there, I wanna rent a little studio space and make some art um, and look at the big galleries and you know, check out Europe and push my boundaries before coming back to art school. I, I don't feel like I'm really ready to settle down into fine arts at the moment. Doing art was the best thing I've ever done, I think, really. It was such an enjoyable experience in year 12 because I loved it. But I think if you're gonna do it, that has to be why you do it, because you love it. It's hard work, there's no beating around the bush, it's, it's hard work, like, you know, a folio is demanding. If you can be calm and relaxed and you love what you do, then I think you'll do well and you'll get something out of it that you wouldn't otherwise. I love the idea of screen printing, I'm really into fabric and texture, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna... So I began to um, cut out these really organic shapes and then began to um, screen print this onto this white cotton drill fabric. And I had six metres of it and I had to do both sides. I put this really beautiful sealer on top, it gave this plastic effect. I was then able to then cut, use a rotary cutter and also really, really measure out the lines and then began to drill into the fabric um, once I'd cut oh, probably about a thousand strips um, and then use these book bindings, beautiful refined book binding pieces and um, I then created the work. Some of the starting points and the influences definitely were just looking at the basic ideas of shape, colour and line. It was challenging, really um, refining. I'm, I'm a really creative person, so I have so many creative ideas, it's hard to really just nail and focus on one thing. So I had to really focus and think about what I wanted to do and what I wanted to create. I did so much research on contemporary artists, but definitely a lady called Mari Funaki, she's now deceased. I think her work was just so unique and she wasn't afraid to just kind of have this a bold colour, have like a full bold colour or have a, a bold design about, you know, um, the things that she was creating. So she was a great inspiration for me, huge. Art will play a huge part of my life, especially in the future. And I just want to show that, you know, it's cool to be, you know, bold and out there and have your own ideas. People are so um, scared of originality these days, I think. Advice-wise to studying studio art or art this year, inspiration, so many people just go to Pinterest or they just go online. There's so much that you can get online, that's, that's cool. You can get so much there, but I think people, you know, neglect to, you know, go outside for a walk, outside the architecture, you know. Don't be afraid to seek advice and help from people and, you know, oh, what do you think of this work? Oh, yeah, I'm not sure about this. Oh, cool. Take that on board and then move on. Don't dwell on the kind of negatives, yeah. My work is named Selfies and it is a three-part work. All of the figures in the work are myself and the idea is kind of based around popular culture and 
the whole phenomenon of social media. My large scale piece is called 1209712. The inspiration that I took from my life went into it, so it was about how I'm portraying emotion through colour and line and texture and stuff like that. So Grid Girls was really aimed to juxtapose the idea of grid girls in motorsports. They're particularly known as the over-sexualised women walking around on the bikes and as a girl who ride, rides, I found that kind of disheartening because it's not what my idea of a real woman in motocross was. I used acrylic paint to do a copy of something I had done on the computer and the whole concept behind it was to show a lot of contrast, not just in the physical form of it, but the ideas behind it. Um, it incorporates many different colours and different mediums. I started playing around on Photoshop and with paint and scanning things and started thinking about how I would layer them on an actual board. And then I did, you know, like a monoprint um, and then I'd peel off the little masket bits and, and hand paint them and then peel off the square bits and screen print um, images that I had taken. It was hard for me because the whole process was like a timeline of different emotions and I feel very um, connected to colours. So like if I see certain colours one day, they'll mean something to me and then the next day it will mean something completely different. So it was hard to kind of keep up with like how I felt about the, the pieces and how they looked. I've been um, like talking to a lot of people for the last year, just finding out things about their lives and what they do, because everyone is so different and you can learn something off every single person. So that inspires me to just like try new things. Okay, my favorite artist um, would have to be, I don't know how to say her last name, <laughs> Marina Abramovic. Her relationship with um, the audience is so open and she's so kind of just free and she does whatever she wants to do. She doesn't really think about the reactions she's going to get, she's just curious. And that really relates to what I do. Like, I don't have an intention of making someone feel a certain way. It's just open to however they want to feel towards it. So I got an offer for RMIT, um, Bachelor of Fine Arts. And yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm waiting for um, a, um, an offer from Victorian College of the Arts. Um, I'll study, I want to study that course. I've been kind of making this magazine where I've been interviewing people and they've been doing little biographies and it's made just everyone connect already and I want to, I want to keep doing that. You can learn something off every single person. So whether it be teachers or people on the street or like your family, your friends, no matter what, you, you should just use them for inspiration and just open yourselves up. Don't, you know, put a barrier up and judge people straight away because Whatever, like, whatever barrier you put up, you're just blocking yourself out from getting inspiration. By taking photos of girls riding, I aim to combat those negative connotations that do depict women as just over-sexualised in motorsports and really show that we can compete with the boys. And at the same time, it really wanted to celebrate the friendships between girl riders. I just used a 550D Canon camera and just used automatic settings. I found that was easier to do because it gave me more flexibility to take faster photos. The most challenging thing was definitely me breaking my wrist about a month before folio hold. Um, I'm sorry, a week before folio hold because um, I was racing that weekend and so I spent a week off in hospital. Riding regularly was a massive influence on my work because it meant that I could continually motivate myself and every time I came back to my folio after riding I was more enthusiastic to get those thoughts down onto paper and so by presenting these artworks I really hope to inspire more girls to break out of their com comfort zone and remind them that they can do it. I really did enjoy researching Gregory Crudson. I found the care that he takes in his work and um, just the amount of time and effort he puts into it as well was really inspiring because uh, it, it was so different to anything I've done. I'm not too sure what I want to do career-wise yet. I'm still going to and fro but I know that art will still play a big role in my life even just on the side because it's something I really do enjoy doing and it's such a relief from all the academic subjects and just the stresses of life. 
So my advice to anyone doing studio arts would be to pick a topic that's really personal to you and having something that you're really enthusiastic about makes it a lot easier to keep on top of your work. And definitely to utilise your teachers because they are there to help you. It's really easy to forget that when you're doing such a a topic that gives you so much freedom. You do get super stressed out if you don't feel like you're on top of your work and it's easy to forget that they're there to help you. It's sort of a retaliation to that, my traditional approach to the selfie. By painting what everyone else just photographs, it's such a momentary and almost transcendental photograph. It, it subverts the almost narcissism of it and the fact it's a painting as well, I think, gives it a bit more depth. I've always loved oils, I've used them from a young age, and also part of using oils was the fact it's such a tradi traditional and classic um, paint and way of making art. And the process is very lengthy, of course. The constant layering and waiting for it to dry and getting things right. If I didn't like a layer, I had to redo it. I started out with just a blank whiteboard and I was like, oh gosh, how's this gonna happen? And then layer by layer, it slowly starts to take form, like this two-dimensional picture looks just like me. I love human form, the way the light hits the face, the flesh, what's beneath the flesh and how it is presented in physical form, just how the face can present different emotions and how our face can tell a story. But I sort of was inspired by history in the end and mainly the history of art, which is mainly why I chose to use oils and. I just love how, once upon a time, it, art and painting was humans' main form of entertainment and now it's been totally replaced with social media, phones, TVs and sort of trying to bring that back a little bit, like mainly to people my age. Um, my favourite artist would probably have to be Michael Borrowman's. I love the I love the texture of his paintings, the paintbrush, paint strokes and it just has such depth and emotion. And I love the shadows and lights and the mood, everything I try to put in my paintings. This year I'm studying arts at Melbourne. So I hope to do a major in art history and screen and culture studies. So I'm looking forward to it. Advice wise, I would have to say, just start on your folio as early as possible. And even if you feel like you don't have time to do it or develop your ideas, just even sitting in front of the TV and do your folio, like multitasking. You can't write an essay in front of the TV, but you can always just do little sketches and find a medium or material that you're good at and stick with that. The title of my work is Mason Jars. The ideas behind it was kind of related to the whole concept of imagination and like how as we grow older and how like when we mature, we're expected by society to sort of compress what we believe in because fantasy is generally seen as something that's directed at children. It's not necessarily something that adults seem to carry around in their day-to-day -day life. There's no place for it in society, in the professional world. The title for my work was Sushi Shark in the series Who Cares? The central theme of my works was negative impacts that humans put on the ocean which I think was a big issue in today's society. The title of the work is Extinction, and um, I was sort of inspired to do that by a trip to South Africa um, with my family, and um, we, we went to a game, an, a game park called Nalidi. They told us about poaching, and I was pretty, it's pretty devastating, and you know, I, it made me want to come back and create a work that sort of highlighted what's going on in a foreign country that you know, doesn't sort of experience what they do. The work is the uh, gamer, which is sort of based around this idea of the people and cars, so the, more of a focus on people in this artwork. Making this sort of stereotype of a car guy sort of a hoon or a, a bad person, so to speak. But I guess I'm sort of bringing that confrontingness and then sort of taking that away. I started by making um, a lino cut, like cutting out the lino was the whole idea for getting the really bold outline with the mason jar. Within that, like within the border that was made from the, the printed mason jar, I just sketched out a couple of scenes, like little mini scenes that the fantasy characters could interact with. Then I went over them in fine liner and then over that in gouache. And then once I'd done all the gouache, I went over it again in fine liner. 
I'd say the most challenging thing in creating the work was learning how to do all the printmaking stuff. I draw inspiration from pretty much everything. I listen to a lot of music and I play a lot of video games, I watch a lot of movies. So fantasy is probably the biggest thing. The most important starting point of the work was the influence that fantasy and imagination had on me as a child because my mum used to read to me all the time. She used to immerse me into all of these fantasy worlds and imagination was just so integral to me growing up. My favourite artist is a digital artist from Poland. She's not that well known, but her name's Magdalena Pogaska and like her style, her processes, they've really inspired me over the years because her subject matter tends to align with mine. Well, initially I thought I was going to take a gap year and spend it honing my skills and doing short courses and just learning to improve my art in any way possible, but I actually recently decided to change my path and I'm going to do a course at RMIT um, studying visual arts. For future students, I'd say that time management is a really big thing. Like you really gotta watch your time management, but more importantly, just do something that really matters to you. Always pick your passion, identify what you're passionate about and then just follow that. Find any way possible to put that into your folio and your work. It's essentially in this particular work, I used high floor acrylics on paper, which I then stuck onto the wood. A lot of people think it's paint that I've, which is, which is like the white background, but I actually painted onto the paper with high floor acrylic and then applied that to the, the, the raw timber with, with a varnish. At the moment, I'd probably have to say music is probably my biggest inspiration just because I get very like uplifted by certain songs and like get like emotionally into music. Yeah, it's particularly um, Radiohead at the moment is a band that I'm like really into. So essentially I began my work in studio arts focusing on the ambiguous theme of the ocean as a whole. So I was just looking at like certain ideas like, you know, the, the way the water works and things like that. But then I thought it would be a bit more relevant and important if I did the issue. So I decided to do human impacts on the ocean, like human like negative impacts. I, I gained inspiration from an Instagram page called Panga Seed, which is actually an ocean foundation, which raises awareness very similar to, to the aim of my works about uh, issues around the ocean and I thought that was really inspiring how they could really communicate to people through art because a lot of people find it hard to talk through words and the art sort of speaks for itself. Right now my favourite artist is Peter Booth. I liked him because he successfully translated his style of drawing into painting. Well I'm very interested in the VCA painting course because I, yeah, I, I did a painting course there for a summer school which I really enjoyed. If you really enjoy art and if you think you're good at it, there's a high chance that you're going to do well because you'll find yourself being passionate about it and putting in the time and eventually that'll pay off. The materials that I used were uh, gel yutong and fiberglass, as well as the materials that was a, a traditional technique of wood carving with a modern contemporary material such as fiberglass and sort of create that juxtaposition. The rhino horn is carved out of a Malaysian timber called gel yutong. It's, um, it's a softwood timber, it's really, uh, it's ideal to use for carving and um, it was great and I carved that out of a solid, solid block of wood and um, the horns made out of uh, fibreglass. The most challenging aspect was carving the, the, the horn out of a solid block of wood. I'm heavily inspired by the materials and the techniques, um, so being brought up using timber and metal, I've, I love to know what I can do with those materials and I love to be able to push the boundaries of what can be done and even, even if you don't have the right equipment. The idea sort of sparked from the trip to South Africa and I sort of tried to think of a way to use the materials that I know and love and create something that is personal to me and, you know, means something. For the work Extinction, Ricky Swallow, um, inspired me. He uses Joey Tong as well and does amazing carvings and I sort of once I saw that I knew that I could do I could actually carve the rhino skull. So for 2017 I'm doing furniture design at RMIT, an associate degree in which we create timber create furniture and um, and sort of go through the design process of making furniture and the history of it. So my advice to VCE art and studio art students is to just do something that you're passionate about. It makes making the work and, and doing the work so much 
easier. Uh... The photograph sort of came along. I did a, a section in my folio that was based on just car meets. Um, and I guess that's a big part of the car world is going and showing off your cars. I did that a lot with my brother, but um, after the car meet, my brother's friends who were the ones in the photos, they were like, oh, let's do some more photos. And we took some photos of their cars and they were um, like, oh, let's do some photos of, of us against the cars. So I guess that idea of bringing people uh, in front of the cars instead of the cars talking for them. So the cars are a part of them rather than the cars being lead, you know, the leading force in, inside of them. So the people are more important. I initially just took it on a, a camera, so Canon 600D, so just a pretty entry level camera, just the usual. Um, I had it originally just all in black and white. So then I decided, well, if I want to aim for this to be like one of my finals, I should sort of take it somewhere because when I first took it, I thought it was kind of finished at that point, but I thought I'd add the color in to sort of further it, I guess. As far as materials used, editing on Lightroom, and then I think I did a few test prints in different colors. Well, I guess in comparison to my other works, this work was, I wouldn't say easier, but it was sort of more, the vision was like there, it sort of came into place rather than I had to put pieces together. I listen to a lot of music. I guess that's sort of more of a motivation than an inspiring thing, but I guess music, uh, photographers, I, this uh, last year I did a lot of study on Diane Arbus and the sort of black and white sort of style of how she works, sort of, I guess that reflects in some of my stuff. Well, again, it was sort of just out of calm. It sort of happened, I guess there wasn't really a clear starting point. It sort of, I initially thought nothing of it, but then it came into her one being my major piece, I guess. I, I don't really have like a favorite artist. That's a <laughs> sort of a tough question, but I guess in context of my work, probably Cartagena again, because there's that sort of repetition. Well, I'm doing music currently right now, but um, I think photography will always be there because I, I'm hoping to do a breadth or a, a minor in um, photography. Uh, <laughs> start now, like it's, it's a lot of work. I guess the biggest part is being consistent and like getting information from any outside source you have, whether it's people you know, tutors, teachers, parents, family, anything. As if, as if you can find any information that you feel will benefit your work, I think that's probably the best thing to do. So the title of my work is Specimen 2 and I try to explore the intersection of art and science and the space where the two coexist. I also try to explore people's reactions to unconventional materials. So the title of my first work is a painting. It's called Conception. It's pretty much about showing the contrast between like a pressured setting and a relaxed setting when coming up with ideas. So like the painting, it's of me. Um, coming up with an idea in a relaxed setting, like how ideas flow and stuff. I did two pieces, two animations, one called A Grain of Sand and one called The Mousetrap. The Mousetrap is, it's kind of, I guess, sort of little scenes of my childhood, like quite personal. Um, and on the other hand, A Grain of Sand is, it's just kind of a narrative and it doesn't really have much personal connection to me. Ideas behind most of my works are moral relativism. So it's just defining wrong and right between two different things. Um, and I just found that super interesting being like a teenager, kind of trying to work out for myself what was the right things to do, wrong things to do. And that comes with a lot of, a lot of things. Like you have a lot of influences and people try and make you do certain things like peer pressure, whatever. The steps I take towards making my final work and my exploration, my choice of materials is often more important than the end result. So yeah, I used my own hair, I used um, ink to create the ink drawings and a bamboo skewer to drag the ink around in a fluid circular gesture. Uh, the most challenging bit was to make the hair sculptures because they're so delicate and it took a long time to find the right process. Uh, the human body is my main inspiration, so uh, veins and organs and the blood within the body and muscles, that all really influences my work. So a few years back I did this um, little program, science program at RMIT, a little three day experience. and. I got to work with cadavers there, so I got to look through the human body and explore all the internal structures, and so that really gave me a realistic 
um, view of what the human body is on the inside and really helped me to decide what colours I wanted to use, what direction I wanted to go in terms of materials and the lines I wanted to use, along with the scale of my work as well. I really like Anthony Gormley's work because he explores the body as well, but more the external structures of the body and the energy that the body holds. This year I'm studying biomedical science, which obviously relates back to my chosen theme. I haven't got plans to study art at the moment, but I think that my art will influence my study and my study will also continue to inform my art throughout my life. So the two kind of mix together for me in my life. My advice would be to start early, um, just to get into it and not hesitate, and also to not worry about the visual diary and documentation being perfect and neat, because I was really worried about that at the start of the year, but it just grows and evolves with you as you progress. And also to choose a theme that's broad enough that can grow with you and grow with your work and has room for you to move. I just did it on some plywood, because I think oil paint looks really nice on plywood. So the process was, I just did an underdrawing in red or underpainting. And then I, I went out, I painted the dark tones first and then just put light on top and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I basically just cho chose oil paint because I wanted to do like a large painting and I think that's the best medium because you can move it around a lot and stuff. Yeah, most challenging, like I said, was the subject matter. I was just all over the place like, just wasting time trying to think about what to paint. Or pretty much anything visual, just like anything that would look cool in a drawing. So like other people's artwork or like just things with cool colors, like or cool scenes, cool places, starting points. Oh yeah, a bit embarrassing for like a lot of kids around like my age when I was like 10 or something really liked Japanese cartoons, like anime and stuff, so yeah, I'll draw those like really horrendous, like, I don't know, cutesy type girls or whatever. His name is Kim Jong-hee, he's a Korean artist and, I know, he like, it's like he has everything in his brain, he just takes a pen and he just draws, he just starts drawing, there's no initial sketch or anything, and then he can create, like, all these characters and they're really grounded, like, in a real world and his perspective yeah, just gonna work on my drawing and try like, um, I don't know, put stuff on social media, just try to get a following or something like that, yeah, just get more attention. Don't underestimate the workload. I spent so many late nights just trying to do like a month's work within like a span of a couple of days. It was not fun. For a grain of sand, which is my first one, I used Photoshop. Then for all the kind of bulky, yucky stuff, I used After Effects. And then to kind of chuck it all together, uh, a bit of Sony Vegas Pro. And it was the same kind of thing for the mouse trap, but uh, I, I wanted to kind of include um, some kind of non-digital form of art. So what I did was I got these, uh, well, yeah, I made these oil paintings this kind of textural sort of with palette knives and um, then I photographed them and just chucked them straight into the animation. The most simultaneously the most interesting and most challenging part of all of it was combining the digital with the non-digital and making it look kind of natural. Orwell really inspires me, all the utopia kind of dystopian societies and yeah the oppression and fascism, all that kind of stuff is just really interesting. And then having some kind of character, yeah, rising above it. But for a grain of sand at least, I was, that, that was kind of my starting point. I just had this idea of the main character, Ern, standing on top of the rooftops, just kind of contemplating everything, and then realising that there was you know, all these other workers alongside him in the same position. And that was kind of a starting point, and I based everything around that. And then for the, the second one, I realised that I should kind of mix it up, try something new, um, try something personal. And so I looked, you know, I, I guess I don't have a really, really interesting life, but um, I kind of picked out the most significant kind of points and focused on them. So my favourite artist, probably, well, they're not actually an artist, rather a director, um, Wes Anderson. The films that he makes and, you know, the screenplay and stuff, it's, it's almost as if, uh, all these films, whether they're animation or not, are actually animations because every little detail is deliberate. Film, film's kind of the, the real dream, so 
that there's a few courses that I'm looking at, like swim burn, film and television, that would be great, but who knows yet. I imagine a lot of people would go into it thinking, well, I've got to do what a conventional artist does. I've got to follow, you know, you know these sorts of conventions, this sort of medium. But really, it's all about just finding what you're passionate about and that will, you know, that will get you through the year. I would usually um, use like acrylic paints and oil paints to create like a really um, thick texture. Um, and then I would usually work back into it using oil paints and like spray paints and stuff like that and crowns. Um, and then in some of my paintings, I would even like go for a collage sort of approach and I would cut out images or titles and I'd put that in there. And sometimes you can't even see them, like, but they're still there because I'll just whack paint over them. What I found most challenging for year 12 art uh, was probably um, the pressure of it all because uh, when, I, when I want to paint and stuff, I'd rather like me just being able to just do it by myself. But when you've got like someone telling you, right, this painting's got to be in this state, this has got to be this state. And it all became um, very structured. Well, a lot of like different artists inspire me, um, such like John michel Basquiat, um, Andy Warhol. I've been looking at John Catapan. I went on a skate trip to Shanghai and from that, uh, before I went, I was super stuck, like I said, with all the pressure of year 12 and everything. Uh, but I went on that skate trip and I had that, um, I'd just seen so much diversity in another country and there's just a lot of different things happening, a lot of different people. Um, and when I got back, I just like, that's what gave me the motivation to work because I was just had so many different ideas from being in another country. I just love to like, just try and paint every single day. Um, and new things will always come up, new influences. Like it's not necessarily just behind like artists or anything like that. Like I said, like just little random things can inspire me. Like I might see two colors on a wall or something and I think they just work together. My plan for 2017 is um, just to paint every single day. Um, advice I'd have for people doing VCA studio arts would just to be, don't get too stuck on ideas. So if you've got an idea, don't feel too stuck to that. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, then just do something else. Just change, totally change it if you have to.